to the uh, see if we can get uh, Miss Katrina out of the uh, Katrina Burgoy is joining us. How are you doing this morning? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm doing good. I, I love that. You know, oh, yeah, I guess she's got the accent. Doing great, mate. You know, so yeah, I mean, you've been in Tennessee long enough, you know. So we've got our uh, southern accent here, you know. So exactly, I noticed that as soon as I got I got on, uh, the errs are very strong. <laughs> oh yeah, right. very that's much right. so. You're, you're all sound like pirates. Ah, that's our. <laughs> well, you know, that's a good thing on a Saturday night sometimes, you know, but. Uh, Anyway, Katrina Burgoy is uh, joining us. Uh, Australian uh, music uh, songwriter, singer songwriter, uh, living in a little country town that was also known as the uh, Australian Nashville, right? Yeah, I'm from a, a town. Well, I'm from a town called Gunnedah, which is 45 minutes from Tamworth, which is a sister city of Nashville. So, yeah, I, gr I grew up singing it, loving it, getting brainwashed by country music. It's great. Well, there you go. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, from what I understand, uh, was it your grandfather that kind of got you into uh, country music? Absolutely. I actually, we, my grandfather actually had a recording, like a tape recording that he, did, he recorded when he was in his 20s, and I found it recently. Wow. And I was, it was only on Thursday night. I was driving home from a show, and I'm like, I'm going to play my grandfather's music and and show some I was showing someone who was traveling with me and uh yeah but yeah he he I sat on his lap and he'd wrap the guitar around me and sing these songs that I now sing today and it's you know like Bobby McGee was one of our favorites I know his favorite song was Patsy Cline and mm -hmm. uh, he taught me all, all of Hank and um some great songs well, you know, that's interesting. So uh, you, you come back and, and you, you know, you listen to these old recordings. Do you can you see yourself? Can you hear yourself in some of those old recordings this far down the road now? You know, I, I was listening to his voice actually recently. And because as he got older, he couldn't no longer sing like it right. became harder for him to sing. And listening to his voice as a younger man, I go, oh, I could see there was a little bit of similar qualities for sure. Sure. So it's funny, you know, just her hereditary and genetics of what you get blessed with. But um, it did skip a generation. We always make a joke <laughs> uh, for my mum. Skipped a generation. But um <laughs> My, you know, moving to Nashville, moving over the other side of the world, uh, going to the Opry, uh, all these things that I would always like send screenshots and say, I'm at the Opry, um, Poppy, and I'd send it to my grandfather. Like all these things that I live wow. today are things that my grandfather used to talk about and saying, oh, my gosh, that would be amazing to do one day. And they're just down the street from where I live now, you know. So it's it's pretty surreal, pretty pretty cool but um you know he's now since passed away mm -hmm. but you know it's funny on days on days when i think about him i'm guaranteed to be requested a song that he would sing and reminded me of him so it's it's really cool that's that's really cool and of course he's always with you obviously and you know i i, I know my dad passed away in, in 2012 and you know and sometimes you know when i'll do something that i'm i'm pretty proud of right i'm like see dad i can do it you know you know what he taught me uh you know mattered you know and I so love that. that's I, really cool i'm sure you have the same conversations you know with uh, your grandfather and of course uh you were early i mean it's early age uh, 11 12 15 years old somewhere around in there self-taught yourself how to play the guitar i mean that's amazing I can't take all the credit for, for teaching myself to play gu the guitar, but that's definitely how I started. My brother had an old nylon string guitar that I picked up one day from being bored, I think. I was playing the piano, and I was obsessed with Shania Twain. Do you like Shania? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I was like playing like Shania Twain songs on the piano because I had the manuscript and then I saw some chords above the music and I'm like, is that how you play guitar? <laughs> and that's how I started playing guitar. And, you know, within the first year, I um, actually won a talent quest, my home local talent quest, the Tomato Festival talent quest. Um <laughs> And at that talent quest, after playing for 12 months and writing songs for 12 months, I then met um, a man who became my guitar teacher. And he actually was in a band. And by the time I was, well, from then on, 12, 13, um, I would be 
sort of like the ferret up the front of his shows, hoping that he would ask me if I could sing. And um, then I became a band member of that band. And he he used to always say, if you want to sing a song, Katrina, you've got to play the whole gig on guitar. Mm. And so that's that's what I did. And it was the best thing he ever could have done. Wow. Well, I guess uh, congratulations is also in order too. Didn't you recently get married? Did you see that photo? As I did. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. I did. We just got hitched in March, March 13th. It was a Sunday. Yeah. It was a bloody cold day, but um, <laughs> yeah, we did it. We, You know what? We had a little shindig, I call it. Um, we had, we're drinking out of mason jars and we got married in a cabin. So it was, it was perfect. It was everything that is us. So. Wow. Well, it's a it's a whirlwind. Now, you, at some point, time or another, you decided, you know, because people talk about, well, uh, this little town is the uh, Australian Nashville, and there's got to be a point where, well, maybe I need to go to Nashville. You've won all these awards, and uh, you know, in your hometown, and uh, you know, in Australia, and and celebrated uh, your career, which is you know always fantastic. But at some point, time or another, I need to go to Nashville, and that's a uh, that's a heck of a uh, a journey. A lot of people don't tell you uh how hard that's going to be like you know you you're going to have to you know buy the big uh jar of peanut butter because you're going to get used to eating that and you may have to sleep in your car you know so it's not as uh easy as people make it out to be right yes you know dreaming is a wonderful thing but it's doesn't come without sacrifice so i moved out here uh, in 2017 but I was 27 when I moved out, um, and it will just sort of show you how long a dream took to to come to fruition. Is that the word? How do you say it? I don't know how to That's say it. That word. Yes, perfect. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so I was 15 when I, I ended up getting a management when I was about 15 years old in Australia, and they said to me, "I imagine you being a songwriter in Nashville." I think that's where your gift is. And I was always a gifted songwriter. That was where a lot of people saw more of my talent, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. You know, I wasn't necessarily the greatest singer, um, but songwriting was my gift. So I, they kind of planted that seed in my head. And I remember <laughs> being in high school and telling my teachers, I'm going to be a singer in Nashville. And they used to just roll their eyes at me and they go, you're crazy. Um, you know, growing up in a small town, where, you know, for you to move away is, you know, is a pretty big deal if you sure. move away and, and make something of yourself and out of the small town. I mean, our small town's blossom now. It's become a mining town um, and it's a lot of people stay, you know, because they can make money and, and build a life there now. Whereas when I was 18 years old, I couldn't get a gig. I couldn't get a job. I ended up getting a job at McDonald's, um, but and gigging and singing and teaching, you know, at the same time teaching singing. And, um, but yeah, you know, I was probably 24 when the idea of moving to Nashville kind of like kept, was become it like to a point where I was nagging at me. Right. I'd come to Nashville and I remember leaving going, I'm not good enough for this town. Mm -hmm. So I left and then, um, yeah, tw I was 24 when I started the journey of making it happen. and from 24 to 27 it was like every week be putting money aside for that dream and not going out not seeing my friends i become pretty antisocial, i think because of my journey here because i would be like well do i go out and spend time with my friends and spend money or do i just stay home and right. save yeah i mean you know anytime that you you decide to take that leap of faith or you have something uh, a dream that you're chasing like that there sacrifices come along with it. And I'm sure that there were times where you came to Nashville, like you said, and, and, uh, you know, you leave broke and, uh, you go back home and, and, uh, kind of regroup and think about, you know, how can I make this come, come about? It didn't happen overnight by no means. And, uh, t Nashville's a tough town. It really is. Everybody has that dream. So you really have to uh, fully commit to the whole thing. A lot of people doesn't have they, you know, they they do or they can't. Not everybody can, right? But yeah, uh, it seems like um, the journey has paid off for you, and and it's changed your whole life. You're you're, you're married now, and and everything's really cool. It's almost like I could never ever go back. I could never turn back. You know, like I'm too far gone now mm -hmm. that I'm could never turn back. But yeah, it is like that. I remember I was 20. I came out here when I was 25, 
and spent three months. I wanted to try Nashville on. I wanted to see if I could like, I could see myself living here. So three months, I went back to Australia after three months. Now being an Australian, I couldn't work in the USA. So that's three months of no work, being self-employed, you know. So I saved up three months of taking three months off work and then also paying for whatever it would cost me here. And I remember being so broke. I used to walk um, six miles to and from co-writes with a guitar on my back in 40 degree heat. Sorry, it's 100 degree for you guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and and I, you know, I used to, I started Ubering and I realized Ubers were too expensive. I, I couldn't afford to Uber. That was like too bougie for my budget. So I would do that. And then um, I... Would I found like if I just ate like I'd get by a loaf of bread mm. and I would just have toast and peanut butter or whatever it was um, and that would be my food and I tell you what like that much carbs don't do it yeah I put on like a whole dress size by the time I got back home to Australia <laughs> yeah. even yeah. in spite of the six mile walks yeah but um, I ended up in Australia in Sydney and I called my mom and I said mom can you can I borrow $150? I need to get home. <laughs> uh, so I, she, she sent me some money and I got back to my hometown of Australia and I moved in with my mum for two years before yeah. moving back to the USA in Canada. And I also, the thing is that there's not a lot of gigs where I'm from um, because it's only a small town. So you can only play, you know, it's not like you can play every, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday in the same small town. You know what I mean? Sure. So I would have to travel three hours every weekend and so I'd be sleeping on couches, um, doing all that. But anyway, I'm so glad those days are behind me. <laughs> well, you know, hard work pays off as they always taught us, you know, when we were growing up and, and you have to have that goal. You have to have that that passion and really passion drives you a lot more than uh, money and other things. You know, hopefully it, it does pay off and it seems like it has uh, started to uh turn a different direction for you and you know I, I've always looked at your your career you know going back you know as being the songwriter that's the that's really where your passion is and I've, I've always asked uh, artists that I've interviewed over the years uh, does the does the words come first or does the lyrics sorry my dog is barking <laughs> <laughs> that's all right Katie May is a in, in here as well. What I, I said, what German Shepherd dog. <laughs> it's um, fine. Uh, you know what? For me, it's like an idea comes first mm -hmm. um, most of the time. So I will, I will think of an idea and then nut it out. You know, I unless like lyrics and melody come normally at the same time. So mm -hmm. I'd kind of be singing along, singing a melody, and something would feel whatever lyric that evokes. But you know music normally comes from experiences from my life okay. so um i yeah you know i'm in this phase right now where i'm writing for this project which is like all happy love songs <laughs> so <laughs> like that's kind of reflective of my life you know so sure. it's um it's a it's a good place to be in from writing from a writer's perspective rather than where i've been in the past so well, it's true. I mean, even uh, if you look back at Loretta Lynn, right, when she was uh, starting out and, and she was running around with Patsy Cline and, you know, do as, uh, you know, running off somewhere or whatever, you know, that CD, that that album at the time, it wasn't a CD, it was an album, obviously, uh, but it that reflected her life, you know, that, that she was yeah. living. And, you know, as artists go on down the, the, uh, the road a little bit, you can go back and look at, you know, a point in time in your life and say, oh, wow, I remember that. And it may be a song that only you remember the most about the day you wrote it or whatever yeah absolutely i think oh man i think about loretta lynn and she's it's just one person that i've been thinking of recently is you know imagine writing you ain't woman enough to be my man mm. you know and going through the process of what it took to write that and oh man i just blows my mind the you know you can kind of like step into loretta lynn's shoes for a little minute you know she's a such a legend and it's kind of different i mean i don't i think of her like i imagine like standing in loretta lynn's shoes this is what it would look like right yeah whereas um when i write songs i think one thing is like i want to connect with someone you know i want to make them feel good that's something um 
in my writing lately is it fun is it does it make someone feel good sure um I try not to get too deep. I mean, in the past, I have definitely gone down the songwriter, songwriter route where we really dive into emotions and whittle out, you know, things of the heart. And I think sometimes like a little golden nugget of that is really fun every now and then. But at the moment, I think I just want to write like... I don't want to get too deep with my writing right now. You know, just like make it fun, make it happy. I think the world needs a little bit more joy. And if I could contribute to that in any way, I am here for the party. Well, we definitely need more party and we definitely need more happiness in the world. That's for sure. Yeah. There's, a, there's a whole lot of that craziness going on for sure. Uh, but the, you know, the whole idea, you know, Loretta Lynn, for instance, I mean, we're talking about all the hard work and a loaf of bread and all this. I mean, here they are riding around in a, in an old car, you know, giving out 45s to every radio station across America that had a, uh, an antenna, you know, I mean, the days have definitely changed, but that was something that, the that she was pursuing more so than do. I think do's like, Oh, listen, you're going to make it. All right. We have to, we got to get gas money to drive this car, you know? So, but, uh, it's so, that. such a cool story, you know? I know. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, yeah, that's so great. I mean, I think he's like, you have to make it. And I think having that, definitely having that as your motivation <laughs> is something. You know, I remember when I moved out here, it was like I could only make an income on music. So that was my visa restriction. So I hit the road. I was like, where am I? Where can I play? I would be, I would be down banging on doors on broadway where can i play give me a stage i'll play for free i'll just play purely for tips and i still do i've got two two gigs or four gigs a month actually um that i play purely for tips wow. and but you know what there's something that when you got to put food on the table um keep a roof over your head um, you know, I moved out here and I only had to support myself. So I couldn't imagine like having a family ha sure. and having to support them um, and going through all that. Um, but, you know, um, right before 2020, my now husband actually lost um, his job. And so I felt that pressure to support someone else. Yeah. But it's a funny, the chips are down. Come on, I'll roll up my sleeves. I'll work extra hard. Whatever it does, I'll hustle harder. Um, but yeah, it's a good little motivator. It's a good motivator for sure. I mean, I would have got sent home. Um, and I think if I moved to Nashville, like, you know, just like if I was from Georgia, for example, and threw everything in the car, drove up to Nashville, I probably would have just got a job and had some kind of financial security and slowly got into the industry here mm -hmm. rather than go head first like I had to. But the fact that I had to go head first kind of like, made it happen quicker almost you know? oh yeah i'm sure once you applied for that visa and you got it you're like well this is it you know i'm gonna you know i yeah. have to make this work now you know so yeah that's really you cool know, I, and i've i've been a full-time musician since i was 19 years old so yeah. the whole just like living off just music wasn't new to me but it was the moving here with no network like yeah. not knowing anyone and going how am i gonna figure this out all right i know a handful of people i'll call them and i'll ask them what they have to what advice they have and then expand <laughs> yeah well now we know all about the uh, Kurt, keith urbans of the world and, and you know coming from australia and all that is there a network in nashville for artists that come from other countries that kind of bring you into this to, to say now listen whatever you do don't go do that but here's where you can go to do this i mean is that something that's uh, real Absolutely. We have an amazing, it's funny. I was talking to someone the other day and he said, oh my gosh, I feel like everyone is from Georgia and Nashville. And I go, really? I said, I think everyone's from Australia and Nashville. And he goes, what? You're the only Australian I know, Katrina. And I'm like, I, but I always, there's, there is an Australian community and uh, there is a nice little hub here of Aussies. Australians love Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, this is an opportunity, you know, the opportunity um, of a population as much as, like, it's so populated here. You know the population of Texas yeah. is bigger than the population of Australia. Wow. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah. With a similar landmass, like with a similar landmass. So put that into perspective. So it would look like to tour, to tour in Australia, you'd, you'd get it done in three weeks, you know, to go hit all the cities um, if you want to add a few extra in there, you could maybe run a two-month tour. 
Right. So like try and support yourself off two months worth of work, you know? Well, listen, I, I want to play this new song. It's hot off the press. Uh, I want to get away with you. And uh, so I'm going to move you back over to the, the green room there so nobody can. Uh, okay, s- cool. S- there you go. And uh, we'll play this and we'll come back and we'll talk about it. Okay. Perfect. All right. Here we go. Katrina Burgo. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Going every dime at a good time weekend. Turn a little all over ten. No plans on settling down. Let you put a bomb on our rooftop bar. The next sleep night I'll be in your car. Your hands in my head. I was in your ear for the record, boy. I wanna get away with you. And be the lucky one that takes you too far. It gets out of doesn't get caught in what I shouldn't do I don't care what I'm getting into Out the sky, fading in the rear view I wanna get away, I wanna get away Ooh, I wanna get away with you I don't know if I can keep the sky from licking Not in my zone now, kissing every other second Breath on my neck, fog and Katrina Burgoy, and uh, that's her brand new tune. I want to get away with you, and beautiful tune. Thank you, thanks, mate. What's the uh, what's the story behind that song? Well, you know what they say that you never find love in a bar. But, uh, <laughs> well, if you hang out was, at bars all the time, you might. <laughs> you might, yeah. Well, I I was on Broadway one day in Nashville, and I was playing a show on a Tuesday night, and all my friends were like, "Come for one drink," and I was like, no, I'm going to go home. And But they twisted my arm to go out. So I went out. I had one drink. And a guy, I remember walking in this bar and I, like, locked eyes on this guy. And I don't really, like, it was weird. I kind of remember, like, staring at this guy. He was staring back at me. It was very weird. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's going to want to talk to me now. Yeah. And so I, I ended up going um, – I was hanging out with my friends, were dancing, and um, they said, let's take a photo. And so her and I take a photo, and uh, her brother takes a photo of us, and all of a sudden that guy that I locked eyes with jumps in the photo and photo bombs us, <laughs> and then he introduces himself and asks me for dinner. And so we went on a date, and uh, three weeks later we're still kind of dating and but th- i ended up having to go to australia so i went home for three and a half months three months two and a half months sorry mm-hmm. and um but so a month later and i kind of thought i'd never see him again but a month later he ended up calling me and saying hey how do you feel if i come and visit you in australia Ooh. and i was like 
I think that's a bit creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, mom, but, mom, I have something to talk to you about. <laughs> exactly. So I, you know, and I talked to my mom about it and she's like, what? Because I had told her about this guy that I had dated mm. for three weeks, but I'm come over here. So, you know, we, we had been, we sort of were talking on, we're talking on FaceTime and stuff like that. But yeah. I just didn't I, didn't, I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. Anyway, he ends up uh, flying out to see me after my mom says, mom, just go with it. Yeah. Just go with it. You never know what's going to happen. And he came out and I took him to Byron Bay, the Gold Coast. We spent a week um, in Australia. He could only get a week off work. And so he spent a week in Australia and we jet skied along uh, on the gold coast and nice. um we had a blast and um by the end of the week i was in love with him wow. so i come back to the usa and we've been together ever since and it's now my husband so yeah. <laughs> wow what a great story well you know I, i've always been like it's so funny like i would probably meet someone in the bar in a bar in the past and go oh my gosh i'm gonna like i'm totally gonna marry him you know <laughs> like but with steve it was just like it, it wasn't it was very i was very grounded the whole time and i think that's what made it work like i didn't expect anything apart from an awesome date today right you know um now I expect a lot more from him. So <laughs> it's all downhill from here. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, he he made, you know he did come to Australia, so that was a big move. That was a that was a good move right there. So that was a bold move. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. He he wasn't scared. So uh, whether whether he was or not, he he was willing to do it. So that that's all that really matters, you know. But uh, yeah. We were talking about uh, B Dog. When is the uh, she's going to be playing in the? Uh, Nashville, Percy Priest Lake, Percy Priest Lake, uh, July 16th, I believe. Yes. July yeah. 16th. Okay, perfect. I had the wrong date. I was going to say 27th, but at July 16th, um, yep. Lake Fest, it's going to be fun. You know, you Americans know how to do summer <laughs> and like even like I'm from the, I'm from a small town and we don't have like beaches and stuff where I'm from. So, mm -hmm. but we don't even like it like you Americans like it. Like, you guys know how to do a good time in the summer. So oh, yeah. If there's nothing on going on, we, we, we'll we figure out a way to have a party. There's no doubt. And, uh, of course, uh, Brian Burns with uh, Sail and Song Promotions is putting these on. And he's doing Lake Fest uh, uh, festivals all around the country. Uh, Putin Bay is coming up. And then uh, this one's going to be in July the 16th. You guys are going to be over there. Yes, we'll be over in, in Nashville for yeah. that one. Yeah. You're coming on down. Yeah. yeah B-Dog and Lou, which has tropical country here on Wednesday. I think they've got you uh, lined up for an interview later in the month but uh Perfect. I, yeah anyway B so dog and Lou. i love it yeah b dog and lou tropical country on wednesdays uh, between seven and nine so they're going to come over and do a live broadcast during lake fest so they'll get to uh hang out with you no over there way. yeah oh that's fun that's really cool well just be prepared for the humidity yeah <laughs> well he's from ohio so uh you know he's used to the cold so they've been acclimated into all this you might you might just have to be like put into the water like you need to make something like, waterproof sound thing so like you just like chilling in there yeah that's right uh, do you know erica sunshine lee i have known her since yeah dang i met her in tamworth which in australia yeah. i've known her since i was probably 17 18 19 i remember i've known her since my mum was coming with me wow yeah. yeah. So she's kind of a similar thing, right? I mean, we call her the, one of the hardest working people we know, but 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 we also know everybody's working hard. But she will literally go from one place to the next, sleeping in her car, and then she pulls out a whole store of T-shirts out of the out of the uh, truck, you know. And it's uh, she is a, a masterful person at marketing stuff. And I figured that you knew her because she used to go over to Australia and uh, other countries and play a lot. And I'm not sure if she's still doing that, but. Uh, she gets she go, she goes everywhere there's a gig to play that's for sure oh my gosh you know she oh, it's it's you know as i said dreams to take sacrifice and she definitely she i've got to the point where I'd, i'm not willing to sleep in my car anymore like i'm yeah. i kind of go no i want to go home to bed um but 
you know, I'd rather just not take a gig if it's not going to pay for accommodation. <laughs> that's right. That's so, right. You know, but um, we're the same yeah, way in radio she, now. Yeah. <laughs> she's at every dog fight. You know, she's she's she works a little butt off for sure. And you know what? She is sunshine. She's just such a beautiful, yeah. beautiful girl. Yeah. Have you been down to Key West? Oh yes, I <laughs> have. From what I remember of it. Yeah. Well, we have a uh, Songwriters Festival down there every year. This will be our sixth year, the Tiki Man Radio Songwriters Showcase Festival in uh, Key West Bound. And uh, it's it's during uh, what they call Meeting of the Minds, which is Parrot Head Week kind of thing down there. And, and uh, we're at Dirty Harry's in the Ricks Complex. And so anytime that uh, we, we might have to get you in the lineup sometime or another. Erica's uh, definitely played it a couple of times. I would love to come down. You know, I have only been to the Key West Songwriter. Is it the Songwriters Festival, like in May? No, that's a different one. That's the Key West Songwriters Festival. This is our our own event that we put on uh, in November. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, if it's November, yes. Sign me up because it gets freaking cold and I can't deal with it. Like anything to escape. Yes, I will fly south. Um, I, you know, my husband has never been to Key West and... I keep saying, I need to take you. I need to take you. Well, so there you go. There yes. you go. Lock us in. And, and I'm sure uh, you know, Erica can hook you up with a place to stay or something, you know, since she's got a place down there. But yeah, we'll work all that details out later. But Beautiful. All right. So uh, how can everybody find your music uh, so they can go out? They're all just uh, just blown away by you this morning. Yeah, well, you can find me on KB country.net so it's kb country.net because katrina burgoyne is too hard to spell <laughs> so kb country.net um all my links and everything you can listen to me there you can find out what shows i'm playing if you're ever in nashville um and you can connect to all my socials i would love to stay in touch with anyone if anyone wants to be my new mate yeah please reach out well listen we're not that far away we're over here uh outside of Chattanooga, which is about an hour and 45 minutes away and on the lake here in Harrison Bay. So uh, if you're ever coming through Chattanooga, we'd love to have you stop in and uh, say hi. She could always come oh, in to the studio to for our show. Well, I was going to say, yeah. you have your show uh, live. And, and, of course, we're streaming on YouTube and the radio mm-hmm. at the same time. So their show is always live on Wednesday. So, yeah, it's not oh, that's that far. Fun. Yeah. That's cool. We had uh, well, we an artist here last or two weeks ago. His mm-hmm. He goes by the name of Greasy Joe, and he's mm-hmm. out of Texas. And we yeah. were giving everybody in Nashville uh, hell about not coming over here for uh, live interviews, and he drove all the way up from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. You know, um, I actually have gone hiking out there near Chattanooga on mm-hmm. the way there somewhere. Fiery Gizzard. Uh, that that's man? that's one of my favorite trails. Hi, um, and um, it, yeah, I hike there. Yeah, I hike there all the time, or I used to. Yeah. Yeah. How far away is that from Chattanooga? It's just about forty-five minute drive. Yeah. It, yeah uh, wow. What's well, the mountains, and then you have to you have to go up Mont Eagle Mountain, and then and then it's it's not far at all. Oh, okay. Well, there yeah. you go. It is beautiful. It well, is beautiful. Well, if you ever need a hiking buddy, uh, she'll be uh, she'll be girl. your mate here. The, uh, our, there we go. Yeah, there you go. The hippie chick. All right. Well, listen, how many I, I'm going to ask you this real quick and then uh, we're going to let you fly. Uh, how many people get your last name wrong? <laughs> uh, you know, it's so funny. I, I, I as a little girl singing and playing on stage for so many. I've had so many conversations about changing my last name for yeah. music and Ah, uh, man, I feel like I'm too far gone now sure. that I can't change it. And um, I probably 2020, I could have changed it because I had like deleted all my back catalog off Spotify and was starting sort of my new American chapter mm-hmm. on Spotify releasing music since I first moved over here. Um, but I missed it. Sorry. Long story short, <laughs> most of the people... <laughs> Most people. Well, I think it's a beautiful name, and um, you know, it. I, think, I was very I, impressed you got it right. Well, thank you, thank you, and and I, I, uh, I don't think you need to change anything about who you are. You just keep doing what you're doing because it works out beautifully, and you're always welcome on Tiki Man Radio. Okay. Thank you, Tiki Man. I appreciate it. Uh-huh. We're going to reach out to you and uh, confirm everything for uh, here later in the month, and see if maybe if we can get that in studio. Uh, possibility I, happening i'm i'm down awesome yeah there you go yeah we get you over here to the tiki bar and the chocolate bar 
you know. Oh, uh, uh, chocolate? Chocolate bar, yeah. Home of the chocolate martini. Home of the chocolate <laughs> martinis. Uh, uh, chocolate and alcohol? Yeah. What? What could possibly go wrong, right? <laughs> All right. You guys do know how to have a good time. <laughs> Absolutely. You have no idea. But anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show. It's such a pleasure having you here this morning. No worries. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And see you later, everyone back there who's behind the camera. All right. <laughs> there we go. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs>